Good morning, friends. Stephen Benoon with Israeli News Live and Danoon Institute of Biblical Research. Uh, we're going to get into some very interesting things. Let me just remind you, though, before we get started on this teaching there, our website, IsraeliNewsLive.org. If you want to support the ministry and the work we do here, we greatly appreciate your love and kindness in doing so. Our mailing address right here on the right side of your screen, or you can donate online. I don't want to waste any time there. I want to get right into this, uh, this teaching. This is really a blessing from Revelation chapter 2. We're going to be talking about the Pergamos Church, uh, one of the seven churches of Asia Minor recorded in the uh, first two books of Revelation, chapter 2 and chapter 3. Uh, I did a teaching on this years ago and showing how that those seven churches, you can see the spirit of that from 2,000 years ago all the way to the modern times. It's not like it's just one for that age and one for this age and one for a next age. No, those spirits move on. And tonight, you're going to find out in the case of Pergamos, we're going to see that exact scenario play out because this is what's happening today as well as it was in the times that when Israel was a nation uh, and even during Asia Minor. So let's go into this. And I want to thank a, a very precious brother from um, Twitter. Uh, I can't pronounce his Twitter name at all. So I won't, won't go into that. But he's always sending some very insightful scriptures. And this was one of those. Because uh, he had asked me, can you speak on the doctrine of the Nicolaitans? Uh, by the way, the word Nicolaitan means to conquer the laity. It's exactly what it means. Conquer the laity. But we're going to get into this whole aspect because it all goes together. You have to understand the stumbling block that Balak uh, did, what that doctrine was that he taught to understand the doctrine of the Nicolaitans as well. So anyway, to the angel of the church of Pergamos write, reading in the book of Revelation chapter 2, starting with verse 12. Write these things, saith he, which hath the sharp uh, sword with two edges. I know thy works, and where thou dwellest, even where Satan's seed is. And thou hold, hold fast my name, and have not denied my faith, even in those days wherein Antipas was my faithful martyr, who was slain among you, where Satan dwelleth. But I have a few things against you because you have there them that hold the doctrine of Balaam, who taught Balak to cast a stumbling block before the children of Israel, to eat things, sacrifice unto idols, and to commit fornication. So have you also them that hold the doctrine of the Nicolaitans, which thing I hate. Repent, or else I will come unto you quickly and will fight against them with the sword of my mouth. He that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says unto the churches. To him that overcomes will I give to eat of the hidden manna, and will give him a white stone, and in the stone a new name written, which no man knows, say, saving he that receives it. Anyway, those of you that don't know, I, I try to use modern English as I read this because iConnectFX.com translates this broadcast into about nine different languages on our channel. And uh, also we are looking for moderators in those languages. We are looking for moderators for the English version. So if you want to volunteer to help us with that, please write us at Israeli News Live excuse me, Israeli News Live at gmail.com. Put in there, um, transcribe for your subject so I can find it. So many emails there, it's hard to keep up with everything. All right, so the doctrine of the Nicolaitans. The, the Nicolaitans is to conquer the laity, to conquer the, the, the believers, the body of Christ. And that's the ultimate goal of Satan, and the easiest way and the first way for him to conquer the church or the laity is to get that stumbling block set before you. 
get your eyes to accept someone else to be the Messiah other than the, who the Messiah really is. What, Steve? Are you? What are you saying? Oh, wow. Who taught Balak to cast a stumbling block before the children of Israel, but he says to eat things sacrificed unto idols and to commit fornication. That all goes together. The fornication is when they interbreed amongst these fallen angels and bring forth these Nephilim, which in turn they try to bring about a, mess a, mess a messianic figure as a result. Yeah, believe it or not, that's the case. But let's prove this, though. Let's go to the book of Numbers and let's actually read about Balaam and let's see what the scripture really says and not what they translated in English. Now, Balaam, as we read here, we go into the um, book of Numbers, chapter 22. We start with verse 10. Uh, maybe I'll back up just a little bit for, for the sake of understanding what's going on here. And the elders of Moab and the elders of Midian departed with the rewards of divination in their hand. And they came into Balaam and spoke him the words of Balak. Notice the divination right off the bat. And he said unto them, Lodge here this night, and I will bring you back word as the Lord may speak unto me. And the princes of Moab abode with Balaam. All right. Now, keep close eye on the word princes. Okay? Just keep a close eye on that word. And God came unto Balaam and said, What men are these with you? And Balaam said unto God, Balak, the son of Zippor, king of Moab, who sent unto me, saying, Behold the people that has come out of Egypt. It covers the face of the earth. Now come curse me them. Peradventure I shall be able to fight against them and shall drive them out. And God said unto Balaam, You shall not go with them. You shall not curse the people, for they are blessed. And Balaam rose up in the morning and said unto the princes of Balak, Get you into your land, for the Lord refuseth to give me leave to go with you. This all plays in to the book of Revelation and the doctrine of the Nicolaitans, the stumbling stone, etc. We're going to dive into this. Let me first just kind of cap off what happens uh, in the story that we have in the book of Numbers chapter 22 here. Balaam not only has God told him not to curse this people, but he also continues on because Balak sends more princes to him, more honorable, offers him anything that he could ever want. And then Balaam, rather than accepting the first ultimatum by God, continues to entertain these people and even actually go down to speak on God's behalf concerning Israel. But what's very vital in all of this is verse 12. Because we read in English, And God said unto Balaam, Thou shalt not go with them. Thou shalt not curse the people, for they are blessed. Now it doesn't say they are blessed. It says in here, Kibaruchu. Because he is blessed, singular. All right? They translate it plural because they assume that that right there, Lota or etaam, you should not curse the people, which is plural, haam, the people. Then they assume that it should then read, for they are blessed, which is incorrect. Kibaruchu. Because he is blessed. 
what is the he in this case then? What is the who right here? The word he is masculine singular. It's talking about the Messiah. So if we go back to Revelation and we read, but I have a few things against you because you have there them that hold the doctrine of Balaam, who taught Balak to cast a stumbling block before the children of Israel to eat things sacrificed in the idols and to commit fornication. What is that stumbling block and what is the sacrifices or sacrificing the idols to commit fornication. That was to bring forth a Messiah figure of their own thinking and their own minds. That's what that's about. The com committing fornication is to bring forth those children through fallen angels. Steve, why would you say something like that? Well, think about it scripturally. Isaiah, un un you know, unto you is born a child, a prince. What is it? Isaiah chapter 9, I believe. Right? Um, and I can't show that to you on this screen. I'll just pull it up real fast here so we can take a quick look at that. Isaiah 9. This is the famous scripture that we all read. For unto us a child is born, and to us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. And Balak keeps sending Balaam all these princes. And we read in the book of Numbers that he does this. And we find out, according to Revelation, Balak cast a stumbling block before the children of Israel to eat things sacrificed unto idols and commit fornication. That doctrine was to bring about a false Messiah. And that is what causes the doctrine of the Nicolaitans to conquer the laity and the brother that sends this to me on uh, Twitter, he also noted that the book of Ephesians plays a part in this. Now, he looked at this as being the high places, being that that represents the synagogues. But actually, the high places in the Greek languages, in the Greek language, is speaking about a place above even the heavens. It is literally the fallen angels. Which it does, the brother was right, it does play in with all of this that we're talking about in the book of Revelation. It just plays in in a different way, right? So let's look at the stumbling block. What do we have in Isaiah chapter, let me look at this real quick, we're going to focus on verse 13, chapter 8. The Lord of hosts, him shall you sanctify and let him be your fear. Let him be your dread. And he shall be a set for a sanctuary, but for a stone of stumbling and a rock of offense to both the houses of Israel, for a gin and for a snare to the inhabitants of Jerusalem. And many among them shall stumble and fall and be broken and be snared and be taken. Why? They had their own idea. They had their own ideology. They had their own princes like Balaam did. Because Balak threw that out there. He threw that stumbling stone by sending all these princes, all these notable figures that were coming down there. Makes you wonder if they weren't Nephilim themselves. Well, he was a Moabite. They had fallen angels among them. They had Nephilim. They had giants among them. Maybe that's why Balaam got awestruck and went against God's own word and went down there anyway. Look at First Peter, what Peter says. You also as lively stones are built up a spiritual house, a holy priesthood to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. What? Hey, by the way, Paul's talking to the Gentiles, okay? They're what? They're a, a holy priesthood. They're to offer what? Spiritual sacrifices. Remember, the book of Revelation says it taught Balak to cast a stumbling block before the children of Israel to eat things sacrificed unto idols and commit fornication. But Peter says you're to offer spiritual sacrifices. 
acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. Wherefore also it is contained in the scripture, behold, I lay in Sion a chief cornerstone, elect, precious, and he that believeth on him shall not be confounded. Unto you therefore which believe he is precious, but unto them which be disobedient, the stone which the builders disallowed, the same as made the head of the corner. And a stone of stumbling and a rock of offense, even to them which stumble at the word, being disobedient, whereunto also they are, are, were appointed. But you are chosen generation, a royal priest, and a holy nation, a peculiar people, that you should show forth the praises of him who hath called you out of darkness into this marvelous light, which in times past were not a people, but are now the people of God, which had not obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy. Now you know it's talking about the Gentiles. The Gentiles become the priesthood. Why? Because according to the book of Ezra, chapter 9, what do we find that happens over there? We find out that the priesthood did exactly what Balaam said they were going to do. They mingled the seed. They perverted the way of, of, of the children of Israel. See? Ezra 9, verse 1 and 2. Now when these things were done, the princes drew near unto me, saying, The people of Israel and the priests and the Levites have not separated themselves from the peoples of the lands, doing according to their abominations, even of the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Perizzites, the Jebusites, the Ammonites, the what? The Moabites. I don't have to read the rest. I'll read verse 2, though. For they have taken of their daughters for themselves and for their sons, that the holy seed have mingled themselves with the peoples of the lands, yea, the hand of the princes and rulers hath been first in this faithlessness. And by the way, those peoples were mingled with fallen angels, according to, uh, I think it's uh, Numbers chapter 18. What? And that fornication, what does it say in the book of Revelation? They eat things, sacrifice unto idols, and commit fornication. Sure they did. Why do you think God had to rise up and raise up another priesthood according to uh, 1 Peter? Because why in 1 Peter? Because why? They had already mingled their seed, the, 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 the priests, the Levites. And they had rejected the Messiah. He'd become a stumbling stone. Why? Because Balak set out that stumbling stone and he got him to accept a false Messiah figure, a Nephilim, ungodly, demonic force. <laughs> no wonder. Matthew chapter 27, we read, and they had then a notable prisoner called Barabbas. What was it? Some guy, uh, one famous biblical teacher says Barabbas what well, means son of the father when they were crying out for Barabbas they were asking for the son of the father yeah but what father Jesus said you are your father the devil yeah that's the son of the father they were asking for the devil's son, the devil's son therefore when they were gathered together Pilate said to them whom will you that I release unto you Barabbas or Jesus is which is called Christ for we, we knew that for envy they had delivered him. When he was set down on the judgment seat, his wife sent unto him, saying, Have nothing to do with that just man, for I have suffered many things this day in a dream because of him. But the chief priests and elders persuaded the multitude that they should ask Barabbas and destroy Jesus. The governor answered and said unto them, Whether of the twain will you that I release unto you? They said, Barabbas. So Christ became a stumbling stone to them. Because of the doctrine of Balaam. And when you take that, when you take the false Messiah figure, that Messiah figure, that false anointing brings forth exactly what's written in the book of Revelation. And that is the doctrine of the Nicolaitans right there. All right. So we'll change the highlighted color now of the doctrine of the Nicolaitans. Because the doctrine oh, can't get that thing. There we go. Well, it wouldn't let me change it. That's all right. The doctrine of the Nicolaitans is to conquer the laity. And that's what a doctrine of Balak does. Like in the case of Balaam, God told him, don't go curse this people. 
for he is blessed. Who is blessed? The Messiah that he prophesied about. That's what the book of Numbers is actually doing. It's prophesying of the coming of the Messiah. Ki baruch hu, for he is blessed. Not they. Because God knew that out of this people, out of the nation of Israel would come forth the Messiah through that lineage. But Balaam teaches that false doctrine. And he wants them cursed. Because why? He wants the false Nephilim bloodline to be blessed instead. And sadly enough, the children of Israel, the priests, the Levites, do exactly that. They end up sacrificing unto idols and they end up committing fornication as according to the book of Ezra. And as I mentioned to you, let me just see if I can find it real quick for you. I believe it's the book of Numbers and I'll just double check that to be sure. No, maybe it's Deuteronomy. I may have told you wrong a little earlier. Chapter 18, let me just see. Going down there. Uh, 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 it's, it's basically where Joshua, they come in there, they spy out, they see the, the giants in the land. They talk about they're more than able to overcome them. Uh, here we go. But for thee, the Lord have not suffered you to do so. Uh, it's not the one I'm looking for. But anyway, the, the whole point is, is we know scripturally that they intermingled. The Moabites, the Egyptians, the Perzites were all intermingled amongst the bloodlines of, uh, of the fallen angels there. Anak was, uh, that's actually, I think it's in the book of Numbers. Yeah, it's actually the book of Numbers chapter 13. Let me just quickly take you there. I, I need to do this because the thing is, is if we don't, uh, somebody that listens to the for the first time may not understand why, when I quote Ezra, why this is so important. All right. Now, you have to remember the 10 spies, they come out. They, they saw the land. They saw the, the, the grapes and stuff, and they were huge. And Caleb and Josh is the only one that says we're able to stand up against these people, right? And they went and they came to Moses and Aaron and to all the congregation of the children of Israel to the wilderness and Paran to Kadesh and brought back word unto them and to all the congregation and showed them the fruit of the land. And they told him and said, we came unto the land where, uh, where uh, you sent us and surely it flows with milk and honey. And this is the fruit of it. How be it the people that dwell in the land are fierce and the cities are fortified. Very great. And wherever we saw the children of Anak, there Amalek dwelleth in the land of the south, and the Hittite, the Jebusite, and the Am Amorite, and in the mountains the Canaanite dwelleth by the sea and along the, uh, by the side of the Jordan. And Caleb stilled the people toward Moses and said, we, will, uh, we should go up at once and possess it, for we are all able to overcome it. All right? Now, you read on down, and there we saw the Nephilim, the sons of Anak, who came of the Nephilim, and we were in our own sight as grasshoppers, and so were we in their sight. See, in the Hebrew, it's Nephilim. I think you have giants in the English. But we also find that the Moabites mingled in amongst that group as well. And that Nephilim race, they bring about false princes. Like in the case of the Maccabees, Judas Maccabee is described according to history that he was a giant of a man. Think about it. Think about it. So the doctrine of the Nicolaitans is to conquer the laity. And they conquer the laity with their false Messiah figure. And I believe that's exactly what Israel is going to produce in this day. They'll start off, though, with one of their own, like Naphtali Bennett, the new prime minister of Israel. They will probably call him the Messiah of Joseph. But when it comes to Mashiach ben David, they won't accept Jesus. No. It will end up being some demonic Nephilim figure. Hybrid. Maybe he won't be so tall as we find in the book of uh, Jude. Jude said they crept, they, they, what did they, let's, let's look at that real quick before we close here, right? Jude 
talks about how they crept in among us. See, for a certain man crept in unawares who were before of old ordained to this condemnation of godly men turning the grace of God into lasciviousness, denying the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. How could they be of old ordained to condemnation? The only ones ordained to condemnation were the Nephilim, the children of the fallen angels. And I will therefore put you into remembrance, Jude says, though you once knew this, how that the Lord, having saved the people out of the land of Egypt, afterward destroyed them that believed not. And the angels which kept not their first estate, but left their own habitation, is reserved in the everlasting chains under darkness, under the judgment of the great day. Even as Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities about them, in like manner, giving themselves over to fornication and going after strange flesh, are set forth an example of suffering the vengeance of eternal fire. And by the way, Sodom and Gomorrah is not about homosexuality. It's about that strange flesh. Strange flesh is fallen angels cohabitating with a race that was not their own. That's what it is, friends. That's what's happening, happening today. That's what's going to come down. This is all amazingly showing how that the church is going to be conquered by this demonic people. My wife told me, Steve, teach something simple. Make a simple gospel message. I really thought revelation about Pergama and the doctrine of the Nicolaitans was going to be simple. I had no idea I was going to get this deep. But anyway, I trust it's a blessing to you. And you, listen, if what we do here is a blessing to you, pray about supporting this ministry. We certainly need your help. And you can do so. We have our address right here. Danoon Institute, P.O. Box 156, Sunbright, Tennessee, 37872. Or you can donate online. All you got to do is just click that little button right there. It allows you to be able to donate any type of credit card you want to use, uh, PayPal, whatever, and you can help support this ministry. We do need your help. Uh, I know it's a very tough time we're living in now. Uh, and don't forget Patreon. We are loading some information there. I'm sure many of you will find very beneficial. God bless you. Thank you for listening. I'm Stephen Benoon with Israeli News.